Well, good morning, YouTubers. It is December 23rd, 2022, and I'm about to embark on what's going to take pretty much all day, I think. Uh, essentially, revamping these cabinets, uh, testing them out. In part six, uh, I've got a list for you. Um, this is this video is so unprofessional, I know. Sorry about that. All right, so here we go. So part six, we're going to be dealing with the more difficult upgrades. Uh, we'll be working from simple to hard. Uh, a lot of these upgrades, if you followed along this far, you already know kind of what I have planned for these speaker cabinet, uh, cabinets, these Jensen CS315s. So today we're going to be looking at uh, where to start and the point of diminishing returns. Um, we're going to be looking at the tweeter, the bracing, the mid-range, the woofer, the port, and we're going to do some comparisons and final impressions. So, uh, yeah, where to start? Boy, oh boy, I'm going to set this down and, and flip, uh, flip on the other side of the camera and kind of show you what's happening this morning. All right, so as you can see, this is from last night's disaster, right? Uh, actually, not a disaster, but we're at the point now where I've got kind of like all my crap set out and anything I might need hopefully is, is at uh, arm's reach. And I'm going to have to make some room, obviously, try to make some room to work but uh yeah basically this is how it all begins quite daunting um i'm sure you've been there yourself you set out to do a project and uh, you wind up uh knee deep in it or maybe even neck deep in it so that's where we're at this morning and uh i'll show you how to get organized and get going all right just doing a sample video here i think i found a good place to Put the camera but i'm just going to test it and see so i think you should have a fairly good view of this area um so let's give it a shot huh all right making some room here making some room so we talked about these patch cables i had used and uh these guys i can wrap up for now um, they might come in handy later i'm not sure pretty decent wire hear my wife playing the Christmas music in the background as we approach uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Christmas Eve and uh, Christmas Day. So not sure about you all, but we are going to have a family get together at my son and daughter-in-law's, uh, visit our five grandkids. And yeah, we're planning on having a nice time with them. I hope you're enjoying this holiday too. So. Some of this stuff I'm just going to get out of my way. Yep, and I'm keeping them, keeping them screws separate for you people that watched that last video and know I'm kind of OCD about that stuff. Yeah, I'm still here. Your video didn't break. I'll get back in the frame in a second. Made a little bit of walking room there. Um, you're probably wondering, what do I have a baking sheet up here with foil for? Right? Well, um, truth be told, I've got a hot glue gun and I've got a soldering iron that I will probably be using at some point. So I don't want to uh, catch anything on fire. I always set them on a cookie tray uh, or a baking sheet with some foil. That way, Everything stays good. Everything stays safe. Today, by the way, um, weather in Chicagoland for you who are wondering. Let's see. What do we got going on here? All right. 
Friday, December 3rd, obviously. And nothing like a unresponsive tablet, right? Technology is great when it works. Not so much when it doesn't, right? Alright, come on, come on. What are, we, what are we doing here? Alright, let's check out what AccuWeather says. By now you're probably like, what the hell, Todd? We don't care about the weather by you. Eh, I'm sorry, I, I care about it. Um, I don't know if you can see this or not. AccuWeather, I like to call it inaccuweather. Superior accuracy. All right. Ooh, baby, this thing is just scorching fast. Actually, the internet's been a little bit slow today because of this winter storm that's moving through. Yeah. Doesn't look like it's reading anything. <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll check on that later. But I think my wife said it was, I don't know, something like minus 24 or something like that. So it's cold, man. It's nasty out. But all right, sorry about that. Get distracted easily. Like a, what is it, the dog uh, in the show Up? Squirrel! <laughs> All right. Let's try to make a little bit more sense of this. Now, as far as a plan of attack, um, kind of what I had in mind here is uh, we talked about on the agenda there. I had um, simple to hard. So what I mean by that is that I'm going to try to take care of some of the simpler things that I can knock out kind of quickly. And then I will uh, come back and try to tackle the harder things. Um, now the first hardest part about this, and it's not really that hard at all, but I've got to open this mid-range hole up just a hat, uh, tad. Even though we will be using the original Jensen sealed back mid-range for our initial test where we're just doing the upgrade with the uh, crossover and the insulation and the bracing, um, I've still got to prepare this for my next driver that's going in there. Because um, otherwise it'll just make a, a mess later on because I don't want a bunch of insulation and everything else in there if I got to go modify the hole. And I told you early on I did get this cabinet because it was a clean design um, and I would have to do as little cabinet work as possible. So anyway, this driver is, I think theoretically, Dayton calls it a five inch. Um, it's actually closer in size to a five and a quarter. Um, unfortunately, putting it in and out of this hole, I've kind of bent these tabs down. They're still on, they're good, and they're not compromised in any way. But um, I just wanted to kind of show you what happens when I put this guy in there, is, okay. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's just a little too snug. Now on the upside, the screw holes look like they're going to line up just about perfect. On the downside is that it gets kind of wedged in there, and that's no good. That will cause a lot of baffle resonance if the, if the um, basket of the speaker is touching it. So I don't like that, and I don't like the fact that I'm cramming it in there and going to be driving down screws tight. So I've got to round off this edge just chamfer it so that I can kind of fit this part in there. Uh, the other thing about this is the 
part of the bracing that's going to go inside of here, it's actually a chamber for this mid-range. And you see it doesn't quite fit in there just perfect. I'm going to actually show this to you up close so you can see it. So if I have it set like so, it's just barely missing the insides. Now, if I were to turn it this way, right? I got even a bigger problem going on. Um, the baffle on this is almost a half inch thick, the baffle on the, on the cabinet itself. So that will give me a little bit of room to play with, but I think I'm still gonna be going in like this direction. And so in the box, it's going to look like that. Okay. So that's the challenge right now is to be able to chamfer that hole so that my mid range isn't rocking around and so that I can put this guy in behind it. This is, um, you know, honestly, I had a lot of uh, back and forth about what to do with this mid-range because quite honestly um i had gotten two of these for a center channel project that i was doing and i showed in a previous video um the horn the compression driver that i was using in combination with two of these in a center channel so that project is still alive and well i kind of had mixed feelings about <clears throat> about utilizing this um, in this cabinet as a mid-range um, but at the end of the day uh, I don't I don't really want to use the original mid-range even though I could probably make it work but it wouldn't wouldn't have anywhere near the power handling capability of this mid-range which is actually a full range PA speaker. Um, yeah, and with the sealed enclosure behind this, we're gonna wind up with a whole lot better tone than, you know, this. <laughs> Listen to this. The sealed back mid range will provide. Um, now, for testing purposes, as we go forward with the original drivers and just doing some improvements, that cabinet inside there will actually create um, a chamber for this mid-range, which will kill any resonance that's going through the um, metal. So that's good. Um, where else was I, was I going to go with this? So um, it oh. Cabinet volume. Uh, cabinet volume is going to be reduced by this much. Okay, so it will change the tone of the speaker a little bit in terms of how the woofer uh, reacts. Um, the added insulation that I'll be putting in will create kind of a, a virtual cabinet space, but I don't think it's going <clears> to <throat> make up for this this cavity that's going to be sealed up in there um, but I don't think that it's going to matter a whole lot for what I'm doing right now which is just to see how they would have sounded with the crossovers and stuff um, more importantly when where this will come into play is later on with the big woofer the, the Dayton series 2 that I'm putting in here um, that one it does need just a little bit less space for um, for my Bennett project. Yep, so, all right, here we go. Um, that's the plan. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this video while I go grab a file. All right. I am back just for a quick minute because uh, 
when you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants, sometimes plans develop as you go. And what I realized is, uh, you know, I've got I've got my file now for chamfering out my hole so my mid range will fit in there. Um, I got my clamp right so that when it comes time to glue this guy in there, I'll have some clamping pressure. But what I realized is that, and I stated this many, many times, part of the design or project philosophy behind redoing these was simplicity, right? Um, it was just for fun, just wanting it to be easy, etc. So I found that putting the chamber in like this is going to be really hard. I mean, for one thing, I've got to build it inside the cabinet because it's simply, you know, it, there's no way I can get it to turn or twist or anything if I build it ahead of time. So I'd be literally fitting these pieces up in there and trying to jerk around and get them straight and, you know, then glue them and then try to put some, uh, you know, small finishing nails in there to hold it for the, while well, the glue dries. <laughs> And I realized it'd be a whole lot easier, and maybe uh, you guys have already thought about it, but um, I think it'll be a whole lot easier if I simply go this direction with it. And uh, it's, is it gonna cut down on the sealed chamber area for the mid face for the full range driver? Yes, that's a downside. On the upside, it will, take away less cabinet volume for my main woofer. So there's a pro and a con with that. Another pro would be is that this guy up in here, now these other braces that I was gonna use, like this one across here, that one will still be there. I've just gotta make sure I leave enough room for it. However, what I can do is well i don't have more of these loose up here but basically i can i've got more sticks downstairs so i can cut one of these to be like a brace across the bottom here which will close this off i'll run the mid-range and the tweeter wires through here and then both the mid-range and the tweeters will be sealed from whatever that big woofer is going to be pushing out. So I think that's going to be the way to go. Uh, what I've got to do next is basically mark this so that I know where to cut it at. Get it all the way pressed up in there. I'm not sure if you heard that little kerchunk when I put that in there. Um, something I did find out also is that, um, well, a few things. Number one, I thought that the back was actually like quarter inch, but it's not. It's like three eighths of an inch thick, so still, still super thin, but not horrible. And then the sides, um, those are three eighths as well. So I was thinking that they were like a half inch, like what you see on the outside, but they're actually not. They're actually just three eighths inch, but there's like a little lip inside of here so it's almost as if they for whatever reason i don't know what but they're not added inside there it's like they're cut right into it let me just see what these are no no that is just added to it it's like they took about like an eighth inch piece of um veneer or like a small strip and put it around the inside to act as a ledge to hold this baffle in place. Um, so anyway, long story short is that when I do fit this up inside of here, I'm going to have to put just a little tiny notch in something like this. Okay. So I'll just uh, notch it a little bit on each side. Not real concerned about getting it accurate because I can fill it with glue or caulk. 
Uh, so anyway, if we're getting this one at the right length, what we will do is get this guy all the way in there, pressed against the very top. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to put a point here. So this is, this is just about where that woofer hole is. So then when I actually cut this off, um, I'm going to want to leave enough room for we're going to have the, the one piece of wood that's going across the bottom, right? That's going to close it off. So I'm going to have to have that in there. And then also I'm going to have the one that runs from front to rear. These are just demonstration pieces. I'm going to have that one probably going, oh, probably across the bottom, like so. So it'll look something like, something like this in the cabinet. Okay. That's the plan right now, anyway. So, let me get to cutting. I shall return, okay? Hey, just so you know, <laughs> I didn't forget about y'all. Um, I'm just still working with uh, cutting these, cutting the wood for these chambers. And I've got a few other ideas as long as I'm down there with the saw. So uh, anyway, I'm at work downstairs. I'll be back soon.